I'm Greg LeBlanc, and uh, I'm here today with Orjit Sengupta, who is the CEO and founder of Beyond Core. Welcome, Orjit. Thank you. So, um, you founded this company quite a while ago, back in, in 2004. Um, what was the motivation behind finding, founding this company? Right. Uh, uh, my wife was working for Deloitte Economic Consulting Group at the time, and I used to make fun of her because they would have two different PhDs do the exact same analysis, and the analysis would never match, right? And what's intriguing about that is if these experts can't even agree what an accurate analysis is, what can the mere mortals do? So I came up with this really crazy premise at the time, which was how do you completely automate analysis? How do you make it something that is systematic, that's done the same way over and over again? Uh, just didn't realize how hard that would be because you have to solve so many problems. How do I deal with dirty data? How do I figure out what the correct model should be? How do I go beyond just random noise, right? And to the point of how do I create a PowerPoint slide out of this that people can understand. So it took about eight years of research, and uh, then Menlo Ventures funded us about two years back. Since then, uh, Ray Lane has funded us, so you know the former uh, chairman of uh, HP, former president of Oracle. So it's been a pretty interesting uh, uh, ride. So it sounds like your goal is to reduce the role of the human in the analytics process, is that correct? In the analytics process, is that correct? I would see it as Humans today are at the beginning of the analysis process, and they introduce a lot of bias because they're at the beginning. Because we are actually not very really good at asking precise questions or asking lots of questions. We get the first good answer and we say, okay, I got my answer, let's move on. But wait, don't you have to know what the question is before you can figure out what data to collect and, and how to analyze the data? So you can't flip it over if you use automated analysis. So for example, we were working with McKinsey looking at um, patient records. And they just took everything they could find. We looked at a million variable combinations. And all they told us is, we want to understand readmission rate. And Bianco came back with patterns like, young women with diabetes have a 49% readmission rate. And that was actionable, because they found that women were not taking insulin as a weight loss strategy. It was a dieting strategy, because your body doesn't process sugar if you don't have insulin. Nobody had thought to ask that question. The medical journals didn't have it. Nobody had found it, but automated software found it because it didn't have any bias. Well, then it sounds like it's more complementary than substitute for, uh, for the human analysis. Absolutely. We see it as the human's role should be interpreting patterns and provide feedback. So let the computer ask the questions. Let the computer test for confounding effects. Let the computer do the statistical tests. Let the human interpret those results and provide feedback back to the computer. The problem today is when people are looking at machine learning, they think of it as human replacement. And that's why they're obsessing on how do I teach the computer to analyze. We feel that explaining the analysis to the human as, is as important, if not more so, than doing the analysis. So we are focused on explaining the analysis to the human in a way a normal person can understand. Then they can provide feedback, then you get the human back into the loop. So McKinsey is famously announced that there's going to be this massive shortage of, of data scientists. Um, others have said that the shortage will probably be at the level of the data savvy uh, manager because uh, much of the data science shortage will be uh, alleviated by uh, more sophisticated uh, computer analytics. Mm -hmm. um, where do you stand on that? So the problem here is we are in the, if to draw, draw a parallel, we're at the level of the PC industry where you had just created the PC kits and hobbyists to, is to have to assemble PCs. You're going to underestimate the need for the PC. You're going to under overestimate the need for the hobbyist. What really happens is over time, it becomes an iPad. It becomes something everyone can use. You still need experts to design that iPad to make sure that iPad is really powerful, but that the expert doesn't have to go to every user to teach them how to use an iPad. And that's what's going to happen in analytics. We have maybe covered 5% of the potential impact of analytics. When it's accessible to everyone, and I don't just mean the senior leadership in a company, when it's available to every person at the moment of taking a decision, then we are going to transform the world. And that you can't do by just throwing data scientists at the problem. You have to do that through automated software. Orjit, thanks for coming in. Really appreciate it, thank you. Mm -hmm.